Natural deduction is one of the simplest systems for proving things in logic. But what is it? How does it work? Stick around because I'm going to show you. everyone, welcome back to Attic Philosophy. This is a series of videos introducing basic logic. We're focusing on propositional logic at the moment. In this video, I'm going to show you what Fitch style natural deduction is, what it looks like, how to use it to prove things. Make sure you've watched the previous video, which introduces the idea behind proof systems before you watch this one. We are going to set out our proofs so that they look like this we are going to have premises written at the top of the page and they're going to have this kind of line underneath them like this. And then we're going to make various inferences from those premises. So we're going to have inferences down here and we're going to carry on doing inferences in accordance with the rules. I'll get onto what they are in a bit. And at the bottom, we're going to have our conclusion. OK, so when we have a proof like this, we will say that we've proved this conclusion from these premises. Now, as it happens, if we keep it like that with some premises and things that we directly derive from them, there's not much of interest that we can prove. We need to add a very powerful rule. It's called conditional proof. It might be the most important proof rule that we're going to meet when we do natural deduction. So here's what it does. Suppose we want to prove a conditional, and if then, if A, then C. Here are the steps that we're going to do to do that. First of all, we are going to assume that A is the case. Then we're going to do some reasoning, just following the other rules. We're going to try and infer C. So we start with A and we try and get to C. If we can do that, then we can infer or conclude the sentence that we aimed for, if A then C. And importantly, when we infer if A then C, we cancel out the initial assumption we made up here, that A. So let's go over that again. We're basically, we're going to start assuming A, do some reasoning, get to C, and then push all that to one side, forget about the assumption, and infer if A then C. Let's see what that looks like in our Fitch proof notation. So previously I said we're going to have some premises up at the top, inferences here and our conclusion down at the bottom. But this notation has a dual use. In the context of conditional proof, we're going to look at it like this. A is going to be our antecedent. We're going to assume the antecedent. We're going to do some inferences just like before, and we're going to try and get down to C. And that's going to be the consequent. OK, so to prove an if then, if A then C, we assume the antecedent and we try and reason our way down to the consequent. So the way we would set out a proof of a conditional if A then C is like this. We start a new assumption. So if we have a proof going on already down here, we make a new assumption and we set it out like this. We have another vertical line marking out some new assumptions, reasoning to that conclusion, the consequent of the if then. And then we conclude the conditional if A then C outside the scope of that assumption. Here's the assumption. Here's the scope of the assumption. And we're trying to conclude if A then C outside the scope of that assumption. That's the way you do conditional proof. That's the way you prove if A then C in Fitch style natural deduction. So what we saw going on there is a way that we can nest one proof with another. At any point within a proof, we can make some new assumptions and they can be whatever we like. And it's kind of like nesting one proof within another. OK, so that's a very important technique in Fitch style natural deduction. Let's just go over exactly what that looks like. We might have our main proof out here. And we might have our premises, the premises of the argument we're trying to test set out at the top here. But at any point, we can introduce a subproof by introducing some new premises, some new assumptions here. And then we do some reasoning here and then we close that subproof and go back to our main proof. And then at some point we might do another subproof. So here would be a new assumption and here would be the reasoning. So when we talk about the scope of an assumption, here would be one assumption and here would be the scope of it. 
Here would be another assumption, and here would be the scope of that second assumption. So all of this isn't within the scope of the first assumption, just this is. This bit is just within the scope of the second assumption. This bit is just within the scope of those initial premises. So that's how subproofs work in Fitch style natural deduction. We can use natural deduction to test an argument, that is to prove a conclusion from some premises, but we can also prove individual sentences. Think about this like the case of entailment where we have zero premises, okay? So proving a single sentence is just like proving an argument that doesn't have any premises. When we're talking about a sentence being provable on its own, without any premises, we're gonna write it like this. We're gonna use this symbol here, which is a bit like the symbol we use for entailment, but it's just got one horizontal bar. So you might call this the single turn style. We're gonna write this to say that A is provable or derivable from no premises, that is from zero premises. So this means A is derivable from zero premises or zero assumptions. Setting out a proof of a single sentence A is going to look like this. So at the top, we have our assumptions. Underneath that line, we have our inferences. And remember, this vertical line here is marking the scope of those assumptions. And A here is set out to the left of those. It's not within this line here. So A isn't within the scope of those initial assumptions. So we're not saying that A follows from those assumptions. We're making the assumptions so that we can do some proofs, but A stands on its own. We're not saying that A follows from those assumptions. We are using the assumptions to derive A, but A is derivable from zero premises. It's a derivable sentence. It's a provable sentence. Let me give you an example of how that would go. Suppose we're trying to prove this sentence. It's an embedded conditional. If A, then, if B, then A. This is sometimes called positive paradox because some logicians think it's a bit weird, but it's a logical truth in propositional logic, in classical propositional logic, so we should be able to prove it. Let's see how we prove it in Fitch style natural deduction. Okay, so I'm just gonna write the sentence out here on the right so we remember what we're aiming for, what we're trying to prove, but this isn't part of the proof. We're gonna set out the proof here in our blank paper on the left. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw this shape and we're going to make our assumption A. And then immediately after that, we're going to make a second assumption B. This might seem a bit weird, but it's perfectly legit. We're basically making one assumption and then another assumption. We're assuming that A and then we're assuming that B. And notice the scope of the first assumption is this bit here. And the scope of the second assumption is this bit here. So within that second assumption, we've still got that first assumption, the A, to make use of. So in particular, since we're assuming A here, we can have A here as well, okay? A is still being used within this assumption here. So what we've done in this part is we have assumed B and we have derived A. And using conditional proof, that tells us we can infer outside the scope of this assumption that if B, then A. Okay, so go over that little bit again. We assumed B, we inferred A, and using conditional proof, we concluded outside the scope of that assumption, if B, then A. Now look at what we've done in this whole bit here. We assumed A, we concluded if B, then A, so again, using conditional proof for a second time, outside the scope of that assumption, we can conclude if A, then, if B, then A. And that's exactly what we were trying to prove in the first place. So we're done. We've proved if A, then, if B, then A from zero premises. Yes, we did use some assumptions along the way. If we didn't make any assumptions, we wouldn't get anywhere. So when we say that we've proved this from zero premises or zero assumptions, we're allowed to use assumptions along the way, but this sentence has been inferred outside their scope. We assume them and then we basically cancel them. We forget about them and conclude this follows from zero premises.
That's how we prove that a sentence is derivable. Okay, guys, that is it for today. That was a quick introduction to Fitch style natural deduction. In the next video, we are going to run through all the rules you are going to need to be able to do Fitch style proofs. If you're enjoying these videos, why not subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. I hope to see you back for the next one.